Hi everybody, welcome to character design. So I want to go over some basics really quick about coloring your characters, okay? There are numerous styles and approaches. If you go check our classroom blog, okay? And if you click view blog and you come up here, I have a couple demos that are up here. So I have a, a base demo on painting sort of 101. It's a different style approach. There are numerous styles and approaches that you can use for painting characters, okay? I'll cover those in a couple seconds. Most common for students is going to be that you're painting underneath your line, okay, your line work. So there you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to drop your, the opacity of your line work down to get the color to sort of feel through. We'll talk about that in just a second. So if you click on these links right here, this will bring you up to YouTube. Look what I just did. See okay? that? Here's a sample where I'm going in and I'm taking right. some I mean, really base gradients. Up, okay, like 60, and I'm applying 70%. these gradients with little highlights, little highlight on top of that blending brow. in some colors, and you get some pretty pretty good results very quickly and sort of speeding through this okay it's just really base simple fill-ins with gradient controls using different type of brushes okay and so you can pick something up like this pretty quickly all right let me see if I move towards the end here once we get some highlights on there that's sort of the finished approach okay all right so to come back here there's also here's another block in this is a little bit more of sort of a painterly all right method. guys well Okay, I have a character that I sketched up here in Sketchbook Pro, all right? I'm gonna take that line drawing and I save that. I'm just gonna put it on like a brown paper. Where'd you get the brown paper? You can download brown paper if you just Google search brown textured paper, okay? And you can just put your character right on top of it. The benefit of doing that is the brown acts as a neutral color. By acting as a neutral color, now once I start to build up the fundamentals of my character underneath, Okay, um, the brown allows those colors to sort of pop forward. This is the most timely manner of the character design. Okay, this is much more involved with rendering and takes the longest amount of time because we're basically building up sets of tones. Okay, these little colored variations right here. And I'm going to come in there. Actually, this is using Sketchbook. Okay, and I'm just getting underneath there and I'm just building up a little bit at a time, a little bit more at a time. Okay, getting some darks, getting some lights in there. I just did sort of a quick pass, and I got my character to about that level and just sort of left it in that demo, okay? All right, that's, again, that takes a little bit more time so I'm building up values, okay? Let me go back. I'm going to do another demo for you today using some basic watercolor. Here's using Sketchbook Pro. Some of you don't have Photoshop. Sketchbook All right, guys, I'm going to do a demo for you real characters. quick here because right. on your character you design characters. projects, I'm going to take the demo that I did the other day. We want to go into this tool, and we want to apply some tool. base color. Nothing too fancy. And, basically start and, and, you, and you can get details, and if you press down on it, you get a thicker line. All these demos but are linked up. I sort of go in there. I start really nice. skin color so underneath. I Go on there. I start. I always work right. a little bit light to dark. I, I can even, as I start applying a little bit of color, I can even come back in a little bit later. And I can just modify anything else I want. So let's, let's I'm going to go ahead and throw some other so color in. Look, I, start to build I was up telling the character of getting that to add in some clothes. And I'm just using right now the airbrush tool. It's throw a little simple. bit of green in there. Like, just doing a rough color pass underneath. Okay. Nothing fancy. And then I clean up the lines and the edges. And look, it's just a rough color pass. That's it. Okay, it doesn't have to or get they anything. Might, maybe it's any, under part you know, of the eyes. Maybe it's on part of the head, by the ears. Same thing here. I'm just going under in, roughing in the a face. A little flap or two here or there. Forward a little bit. It takes okay. perfect. Okay. easy. Now I can jump over. Edges, and, then um, go back. and I can do the rest again, of the body. And again, remember the little the marker here. parts no, here, too. If you want to add in a little detail, you can okay. take a darker that line. Way, and You could come in here and put some little line detail like that. You see that? Make it look like his face is sort of rough. Maybe he's got a wrinkle in his forehead or something. I could use the smaller copic in here. And maybe he has a little stubble on his chin. Let's go a little bit darker in there like this. Together. Again, okay, watch. If I add another layer, use this to my benefit here. Is that we have numerous uh, varieties that we could use. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to show you guys I'm using Photoshop. I'm going to give you guys some brushes and some smudge tools. Okay, brushes are really really fantastic, and I want to show you a quick way. I'm this is a student sketch right here of some characters, and I wanted to get in there. I just want to show you really fast how I can get in and I could start coloring something in Photoshop. Okay. So first off, I had to go back in. I tried opening the file in Photoshop, 
but since it was a file created inside um, Sketchbook Pro, it was merging of the layers together. Okay, so I had to go back to Sketchbook Pro, turn off the tone, come back, open up just the line. That's what I did here. You want to take that line drawing, and um, I can't believe you always want to put it on top. And I'm going to tell you, you probably wouldn't believe me, but how many times I've done this demo before, and students always put the line drawing on the bottom. The line drawing goes on the top. Okay, once that line drawing is on the top in Photoshop, you're going to come over here when the layer is selected. You need to put this to multiply. Because right now, if I come in here, I take a brush, and if I paint orange, I don't see any orange. Even though the orange is showing up here on my layer. It's not showing because this layer, if I do this, you're like, oh, wow, there's orange. But the problem is, is I'm painting on top of the line. So if I paint rich enough, the line disappears. That's not good. Okay. So what we want to do is have the line on top. We select the line layer. We put it on the multiply. Voila. Now, anything that I paint underneath is going to show underneath that line drawing. Okay? Let me go back to a couple steps because I just painted on my line. There we go. So I put this on multiply. I'm underneath. Now, anything that I paint is showing up underneath my line drawing. Okay? Do you see that? All right. Now, I don't have to get in here and, um, and, and have tons of detail. I can just do very quick color passes to show the color and the feel of the object. And by a quick color pass, I usually mean by having just a base color, what we call a local color. You select some areas to be darker values, and then you select a couple highlights. It's literally that simple. Okay. Before I get into that, I need to show you how to bring in different types of brushes. The great thing about Photoshop is having access to different brushes. These are some brushes I just loaded in here. I don't like them. They're given to me. They're okay, but they're having another purpose. I'm going to go back and I'm going to load in my brushes. I'm going to give you some of my brushes in a couple minutes here. I'm going to show you how you load them. It's this easy. What we have to do first is we have to get that menu up for the brushes. So I right click on top of my piece and I get the brush selection menu up. Up in the upper right hand corner of this I have the gearbox right there. I click on the gearbox. I'm going to go down to replace brushes right now. I'm going to click down here. These are the brush ex brushes I'm going to give you. Feels basic. If you hit those and hit load, I've now replaced and you have my basic painting brushes. Okay? So these brushes are very specific. They're really great. Some of these come from this really talented conceptual artist, Saudi, uh, what is his name? Saudi Shadavi? Yeah. And a really talented guy. These are brushes that have, I've been combined. I share some with students. The ones that say SHAD next to them are from Shadi. Okay, they're really fantastic, all right? And then there's a bunch of other ones in there that I've got from students, and I have some texture brushes up there, all right? So look, if you come over here, I'm going to click this brush right here. Okay, I call it, I relabel it, and I call it texture fade in because that's what I like to do with it. So if I come down here and I paint with this brush underneath my line layer, see if I'm pressing all the way down, it has a really solid feel. And if I press very lightly, I get this light feel to it as well, okay? Now, something that's going to happen is if I'm painting under the line right now, I, after I paint, I have to go back in with my eraser, right? And I'm going to have to take my eraser, and I'm going to have to erase all those edges around like that. There's an easier way to avoid that. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what you do is this. It's really easy. As you come in here, I'm going to select around the line drawing. I'm going to come over, click the line drawing layer. I'm going to hit the Move tool, which is V, and then I'm going to hit an arrow button. What that? Oh, it's not doing it because it has the, hold on, it has white around it. So it has white around there for when it was copied and pasted in. What I'm going to do then is come over here. I'm going to hit the W for the wand tool, pull up the magic wand. I'm going to adjust my tolerance right down here to about 15. I'm going to come back here and select right there. And now it's selecting around all the white around the character. I'm going to hit delete, hit deselect. What it did is it deleted all the excess white around that character. So now if I come over here and I take the lasso tool and I select around, hit V, the move tool and the arrows, I've now selected just the character. The benefit for me doing this is now if I come down here, we don't paint on the line layer, do we? We paint underneath it. So now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create a layer underneath that. And I'm going to label that my paint, paint layer, right? Now I could come down here 
and I anything I paint, see it's landing in the lines. However, though I have that one little issue right there where it deleted part of the inside, I can adjust that in a minute. But you see the benefit of how much time that just saved me? That I'm painting the side of the lines right there. I just did that by selecting around and then hitting V the move tool and it would select around for me, right? If you don't want to do that, that's just fine. That's up to you. Okay, so if I want to add in that selection right now, I just go to my lasso tool, I hold the shift key to add, and I come down here and I'm going to add this little section right near. You see that? I added that in. So now on my selection, see I can paint in there really quickly. I can leave that selected and now I could come in and just do this. I could say, hey, that's my local color. Let's say I want to put some highlights. I can lighten this up. I can come in here and say I'm going to have, I can low, adjust my brush size. I can have some highlights in here and here. Um, I might make the eyes another color. I make, might make them blue. I want to put some darker shadows maybe in the back here. And I'm adjusting my brush setting when I'm moving. Because obviously if I'm at 100%, I'm going to have a pure dark. If I go down to like 20% by hitting 2 on the keyboard, I can get some lighter values. So I'm always adjusting by hitting these keys very quickly. Okay, now I can throw some shadows in on my character. You see how fast I did that? I'm putting just a base color underneath. Okay, all right. So let's say I delete that. Someone was asking me about watercolor. Okay, Photoshop has some default brushes that are already watercolor. I'm going to go ahead and load them in right now. If you click on that gearbox and I come down here and you go to natural brushes right here and if I click natural brushes I hit append. Append means to add to. It just added those brushes down on the base right here. On the base section you will see watercolors in here and these brushes are sort of designed that if I want to get in and start painting on my character they don't allow like a ton of flow in there. See they have a very soft natural sort of flow. Now at 100%, see it looks like this. It's very soft. You see that? It's not flowing full of color. Okay, but if I continue to go over it more and more, it will get richer. That's how they created those watercolor brushes. It gives you this sort of nice, soft watercolor feel. Okay, like so. All right, then you can come back and you can watercolor back on top. So if I want to put a lighter feel, see I'm just very lightly coming in here, throwing in some lighter colors. Let's say I want his skin to be more of a green, right? I can come back in and I can throw a light green on top of him like that. So do you see how fast I'm coloring my character by using that selection method, okay? I've just selected around the character and it's a lot easier for me to get in there, all right? I prefer that you guys think of having contrast. That if you have something light like that and you have little textures, don't be afraid to come in here and put little bits of contrast on top. Now, the watercolor might not be the best brush for that because look at what happens when I press down. It's this very wide affecting brush, right? That's how watercolor is. It's like taking a big brush loaded with water and that's a term we use when we load a brush full of water and we, and we, and we paint down. So if I deselect, see this? It's very soft. That's why those are watercolor brushes. And when I get into doing a little bit of texture, I might decide to come into the other brushes I'm going to give you to a brush like this one, texture fade in one or two. And then if I come in here and I sort of press down, look at the difference now. Let me zoom in there. So now as I press down, I'm getting a really definitive little contrasting element in there. Okay, I'm at 100%. So if I don't want it to be that dark, what can I do? I press three on my brushes. So now it's going to be a little bit lighter. This allows me to come in and throw a little bit of shadow down like that. Allows me to get in here and block in a little bit of shadow under that leg if I want. I can put a little shadow under there, the drop shadow. It'll be casted from that shell. Okay? I could go in there, I could paint the white a little bit, the eyes a little bit white. What happens if I paint white eyes on white paper? I'm not gonna see the eyes, right? That's why artists tone their paper. How do I tone my paper? I go to the very bottom layer. I'm gonna come over here. I can say select all. I can pick a light valued color. I can pick a brown like this. And let's get a little bit more so burnt something like about right here. That's pretty rich. I need to slide that over a little bit more, go lighter to about there. Like a light colored Canson or Strathmore paper. I hit OK. I'm gonna come over here under edit. I'm gonna say fill, foreground color. 
and voila, oh my gosh, magic just happened. Now I could paint the white of the eyes and I could see what the white of the eyes. Now I can come back to my paint layer on my character, right? I could come in here, I can select white. Now, the only problem that's gonna happen is as I paint on here and try to get those eyes in, the white line that's up above is going to be stronger than what's on there because that's my line layer. As I continue to paint, I can drop down the opacity of my line layer and watch what happens here. My values start to show through that hold the character together. Do you see that? The values of the color are holding through, okay? So eventually, as you get better at painting and you guys get more experience, you'll start to paint on top of your line layer or, you, or underneath it, and then you start to lose your line layer almost completely. That's later on, okay? But for right now, our goal is to, you know, when it, keep that line layer about there. I think that's presentable. It's about 80% opacity. And I could come in here and I could just keep painting underneath. Now, what's really cool, remember, that's my line layer. I mean, excuse me, my paint layer above this layer. If I don't want to accidentally paint on that tone layer, I can lock that. Two ways I can lock it. I can select the layer, hit question mark on my keyboard. That'll lock it. Or I come up here and press their lock which is right there, and that makes it official, okay? Same thing if I hit the question mark again. If I hit this, look at what happens if I come with pure white right now and I try to paint on this layer. It tells me, you cannot use the brush tool because this layer is locked. You prevented that for yourself from doing that. So that's an advantage. Now I can go to my paint layer. I could quickly come in here. You don't have to spend a ton of time painting your characters. In fact, usually just a general rule is the rougher your character is, the better looking or the more attractive that they tend to look. Okay, so if I just come in here, sort of adjust my values, I might throw a couple darks in here, I may make that dark. Now, one of the great things about brushes in Photoshop are texture brushes. I have brushes on here that will say, if you scroll down here, you'll see a little, it says texture, it's a little block there. You can't paint with that, I just put it there so I could tell the differences. So if I come down here, I say thick texture right now. And if I take that texture brush like that, and if I come over here and let's say I decide to go to some type of um, green texture, I could come over here and see I can just go across the shell like that. And now I have a green texture that's filtering in. Okay. The next cool thing I want to teach you about is using smudge. You're like, what's smudge? Smudge tool presets, I'm going to give you these. These load differently than brushes. They are tool presets, okay? So in the file that I give you guys today, this is what you're going to have. I'm going to dump out these because these aren't smudged. I'm going to delete these guys, okay? I'm going to give you, actually I should delete them. I'm going to keep them because I want to see what brushes are good. But I'm going to give you these right here. Phil's basic brushes, and then I'm going to give you the smudge. You'll have two brushes in there. So the smudge say TPL next to them for tool preset, okay? The other ones say ABR. ABR is for brushes, okay? So watch what happens. Here's the great thing about smudge. To use your smudge tool, you have to come over here. You might see that tool. You have three tools in there, blur, sharpen, and smudge. If you click smudge, right, you have to come over. Then you have this little finger guy right here. It's the smudge, like your finger would be, right? You have to load the tool presets. To load the tool presets for smudging, you have to click this little arrow triangle next to it, and it's going to bring up this box. You then, just like your brushes, you have to click the gearbox, and you have to say, replace tool presets. Once you click that, it will open up the window. You select smudge, you load them in, and voila, you have the smudge tool. These smudge tools are 100% awesomeness. Okay. I've got a couple in there and I've got a couple from students. Let me show you why they're so awesome. I'm going to come over here on my paint layer and I'm going to, um, give me a second here. What am I going to do? I'm trying to paint. There we go. I had the wrong brush there. Let me go in here. I'm going to take a real basic, I love this block in right here. I'm going to paint some green, right? And then I'm going to paint a little bit of darker green underneath like this. And then I'm going to come over, see how nice that brush looks. I'm going to paint a little bit of orange up here. Oops. A little bit of a yellow orange right there. Okay. 
Here's the really cool thing about these brushes. Now I've painted that in. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to go to smudge. So I click down here. I have a hotkey on my computer that I installed. You can do that under the preference settings. I click smudge. I click up here. Now don't get confused about this. You have smudge presets that are here and then you have brushes. So you can take brushes and smudge with brushes. That is a possibility. You can do that. However, these tool presets work great if I just select them like this and I go to smudge nice. Okay, I'm at 50%. If I hit zero, it's just like a brush. I'm at 100%. Look at what happens if I come in here to smudge. It is moving the color around and I am smudging and blending colors together. Okay, it's like my own little blend preset. I'm going to drop down to 10% and it's going to come in and it's going to lightly smudge colors together, right? There is, if I, oops, I click the brushes, click the triangle, scroll down, look at this one, look at scratchy. It makes it scratchy. See how cool that is? Okay, you have a whole bunch under here that are absolutely fantastic. Directional blend. See this? It blends the whole piece. So what's really cool about that is I could come in here, if you put too much texture on a shell, don't worry about it. Take a smudge brush, adjust your percentage, go to like 10%, see what it does. Look at this. I can come into like 50. I'm now smudging that texture into the paint. See how I did that? It's a great way to blend and use. Okay, those are wonderful smudges. Now, the other brushes, you know, I'll go ahead and leave these brushes in here. They were given to me and I haven't really even used them. They're from this artist whose name is uh, John Silva, okay? So actually, let me just delete this part out real quick. I have not used these, and this is how you would use these. Remember under smudge, you have the option to use other brushes, okay? So watch, I'm gonna come back to brushes here real quick. Let me block in some more yellow. Let's put some more orange on there, okay? Like this, here's some more orange. I wanna see what happens. I'm on my paint layer. So I can use other brushes that I have. Next to that triangle, I have the brush preset. So if I were to take like this brush here, which is this, um, I can't even pronounce it. It's this German Afghanmeyer pencil brush, right? If I take that and I come over here, look at what it does when I smudge, but it's smudging with the color that's underneath. It's not really, it's actually more, excuse me. I, my bad, my bad. I hit my brush setting. I thought it was smudging, it's not. I'm going to come back down here to smudge, then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to come down and grab that. There it is. And now as I come in here, this brush is going to affect my paint. You see that? You see what it's doing? See how it's affecting? And again, my opacity and strength is affecting that. If I go to 100%, look at what it's doing. I'm smearing that paint around. Look at that. Speedy Turtle, right? See how he's all smeared? Every brush is going to affect the paint differently in smudge. That's why people create just definite brushes for smudges. Okay, so real quick, if I was going to create, let me get a couple commands Z's in here. So I have these new brushes that I haven't even used for smudging yet. And Mr. Silva, a friend of mine, gave them to me. Michael Matsumoto did, okay? So watch, I wanna show you real quick how I can load those brushes and not get those brushes confused with my other brushes. I don't mean to confuse you, but this is some important stuff in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a big area like this and I'm gonna fill it with all black. Edit, fill, okay? There it is, foreground color, it's done. Now that that's done, I'm gonna take a the type tool, switch to white, I'm gonna select right in here and I type in the word S-M-U-D-G-E, these are smudge brushes, right? I'm gonna select that type, I'm gonna make it pretty large to about, let's say, 48, right? When it's done, I'm gonna hit transform on it, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna stretch that up and down so I can see the word smudge in there, right, like that, okay? Now that I have smudge, I'm gonna combine these layer together like this, because what I can do is I can put that into my brush preset so I know how to separate my brushes. This is something that I like to do when I'm working. So I'm gonna select this right now, and all I have to do is come under Edit and say Define Brush Preset in Photoshop. Edit, Define Brush Preset. That now is gonna turn this into a brush, but I'm not gonna use it as a brush. I'm using it to separate 
the new brushes I'm about to load in that I can also use for smudging. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so now if I come over here, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. Select all, delete it. If I come over and I look at my brushes, I right click and I scroll down, look at what's down here on the bottom. Smudge. So I know that if I want to load in those other brushes from John Silva, I can use them for smudging. I know exactly how to find them in here. So how do I load them? I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click under the gear. I'm going to go to load brushes, not replace. Replace gets rid of all my other brushes. I like to back up my brushes just in case because if you have lots of cool brushes, you want to be able to come in here and save them and have them available for backup, right? Right now, I'm going to come back under here and I'm just going to say load brushes. I'm going to go to John Silva smudge brushes right there. Hit load. And look at this. All these brushes are his brushes and look at where they landed underneath. My smudge brush. So if you click on this and you want to look at this as it's on a large, but let's say you had a stroke thumbnail like that. Some painters like to look at what the stroke of the brush does. That's fine. You can see how I separate it with a little word smudge there. Okay, that way I know these brushes down here. Now, um, I have a little JPEG that I'm going to give you. Let me show you what the JPEG looks like. Right, if you click this open right here, see this right here? Let me zoom in there. These are the smudge brushes for somebody who's gone in here and they're showing you what these brushes do, how they affect the paint. Look at this one with the leafy edges. Makes these cool little adjustments here. This is a great little information because now you can use any of the brushes I give you. Look at this one here, the number of this 150. It's called Better Blur Edges, how it does that. Look at this one, Wet Oil Edges. Okay, so That's really a benefit to me to have that information. I'm going to print that out and keep it next to my desk so when I want to use a certain brush that has a certain feel, I can grab that really quickly. Okay, let me go back into Photoshop real quick. Let's turn on my paint that I'm working on with my character right now. So now if I want to come in here and smudge, let me change brushes. I, out of habit, have been using Photoshop for a long time. I prefer this sort of large list because I like seeing the display. And I label my brushes and what they're for, right? Give me a minute here. I'm going to go back into this brush right here. Now I'm going to come back to smudge. I'm going to touch the smudge option. I'm going to go back here. Now as I load and come down under my brushes, I can see the new ones that I just loaded because they're under the smudge setting here. And if I look down here, I look, there's that wet oil edges brush. So now if I come in here and I start smudging along, this brush is going to make my paint, it'll smudge it together and it'll give the feel of oil paint. That's cool. Actually, I like that a lot. Look at the, the strokes that are getting in there. Okay. So that's how I'm smudging using that brush to my effect. Okay. And my benefit, excuse me. Too busy talking in this demo. Okay. So that's it. That's just a quick, I, I'm just doing this as a bypass to show you that I don't like that color on that guy, but I'm just showing you how you can use different brushes. So I showed you the watercolor brushes. There are some that are natural in Photoshop you can use and the differences are just very soft. Um, you can come in and just do a base fill in with color, put some just simple values underneath. You don't have to get into anything too complicated. Okay, and I put up some other demos that are linked up to the class blog up here, um, right here on uh, other samples that you can do as well. Okay, all right guys, have fun in the shop recorder.